next time we're in a tree, it'll be down in West Virginia. So I'm excited for that. Following a beautiful five-hour autumn drive, we finally made it. Upon arriving, we met up with Will, jumped in the buggy, and got the grand tour of the property. We set up a few stands in prime locations, checked them out, and got them ready for the following day's hunt. first evening in West Virginia and I was already beside myself looking at these beautiful gobblers. The state's fall turkey season is in and I'm just hoping they'll walk right down the path. They seemed to be content feeding where they were, out at around 80 yards, and never came into bow range. Our evening would end with only one deer sighting, but what a start to our out-of-state hunt.
The following morning, I headed to a new setup for a solo hunt, and was quickly greeted by some feeding deer. They may not have had the antlers that I was hoping to see, but seeing deer nearly in bow range would give me great confidence in this location for the remainder of the trip. Well, it's day two of our hunt here in West Virginia. It's Monday, October 11th, and we're back in the same stands we were in last night where we saw all the turkeys and the one deer. It's still real warm. It's probably around 80 degrees right now. It's about a quarter after five, but I mean, we saw the, the action last night. I'm hoping maybe as the moon phase gets closer and closer to full, maybe they're gonna wanna move. It is supposed to cool down right before dark, so maybe if nothing else, that'll get them moving, but I like this spot. I think we have a chance, regardless of, uh, regardless of conditions, so fingers crossed. The next thing I know, I look up and see antlers about 100 yards out. Unfortunately, darkness would win out, and the bucks would never make it into range. Well, that was our best hunt so far this year, uh, PA or West Virginia, but that, that one buck, definitely a shooter, um, and the other two just on around, I don't know, 80, 90 yards away, but I figured that was going to be a decent spot. I don't know if we're going to move the stand tomorrow or what we're going to do, but that was encouraging again. It's a, warm evening. It's still in the 70s and uh, I'm getting ready to head back, but I'm encouraged anyway. Hopefully we can make a move on that one. As I headed out the next morning, I had no idea that one of the wildest hunts I'd ever experienced would play out all around my tree. 
Just behind me, beyond where I can film, are two beautiful gobblers, likely from the flock that we had seen two nights ago. They're slowly working their way towards my shooting lane and towards the camera. Enjoying the meat hunters so far? Then be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for tons of other hunting content and stick around for all the upcoming hunting adventures this year and beyond. Like us on Facebook for regular news updates and follow us on Instagram to keep up with where we're hunting currently. Now, back to the hunt. at that exact moment that my camera died, which in and of itself is no big deal. However, I was absolutely devastated as just a moment later, a solid shooter buck walked right down the fence line and unfortunately caught a movement I made checking back over my shoulder for the turkeys. I don't know what I would have done if he didn't see me with my camera being out of commission, but he made that decision for me by bolting. An unbelievable hunt, but very little footage to show for it. Forgetting the fully charged battery back at camp is a lesson I won't soon forget. I'd eventually climb down and confirm what I already believe to be true. The shot was a clean miss. If there is one bright side, however, it is that when the camera died, I thought the footage was corrupted and lost forever. Luckily, I was able to recover at least a bit of what was an absolutely wild morning's hunt. Despite the tough morning, we headed out again for our final evening to the stands we ended our previous day in. Well, here we are for our last evening here in West Virginia, and it's a cool 
75 degrees, so you can probably guess it's been pretty hot, but it's a little after 5 o'clock now, and I'm actually pretty excited for this evening's hunt. All tags are still in our pockets, and uh, maybe tonight's the night we fill one. The only movement we'd see on this hunt came just after legal light, as we had four deer walk right under our stand. It's just been one of those days. I mean, we sat in there all evening, and of course, right after we had any camera light, we had four deer walk literally right underneath us. One actually sniffed the haul rope that Will had on that tree stand. I didn't use it today. I used the one on my uh, backpack. And, I mean, you could hear him. I know we couldn't see him, but just timing's been off all day this morning. Went the same way. I couldn't get the cameras to work. I filmed some stuff and it, it died and corrupted the what little video footage I had. And tonight's probably just putting an exclamation point on a bizarre day, but we got one more hunt tomorrow morning and fingers crossed maybe things will all line up finally. Late into the morning, deer were still making appearances around the stand. All I can think of is the buck from yesterday, and if these deer are still moving, maybe he is too. Unfortunately though, these deer would be the last ones I'd lay eyes on in West Virginia in 2021. I packed up and headed back to meet up with Will and Kyla. This morning was a trip, to be honest. I mean, I was staring at the stars for 20 minutes, it felt like, and I, I mean, I even made the comment, I said, oh, it's a clear morning, it's gonna get daylight quick, we should probably get in the stand. Mm -hmm. We get in there and it's like an hour after it's supposed to be daylight and we still can't see in the woods yet. And it's yeah. like, what's, what's going on? Oh no, yeah, I but got it, pretty cloudy. It sure did, mm -hmm. it's, I mean, it was chilly. Was it? All morning. Which I thought was going to be a good thing. I mean, I saw deer come out at 10 o'clock. So. Yeah. Yeah, and that's that's something that two days ago yesterday was not going to happen. You know? No. Yesterday, that when you said about, like, whatever gets you up in the morning, then mm -hmm. get going. There's been days where I'd have quit by 8 o'clock where it just it ain't happened. Yesterday was not one of those days because so much was going on, but that buck didn't come through until yep. 8 o'clock. Yep. Yeah. Definitely. So much right place, right time. That's I gotta give you that. The two spots we were in were the right place. Yeah. Right time, maybe not for Monday night. Whenever we saw the big one. I think that was maybe. Monday evening. Yeah, I believe so. It should have been right time yeah. yesterday, if not for. I, I kept on thinking that. The whole trip, we mm -hmm. saw turkeys one day. Yep. The one coyote, and then shooter box two days. Mm -hmm. But then I had them all in 20 minutes, and I messed everything up. <laughs> And, you know, I guess too much of a good thing. Yeah. It's, you know, it's, it's quite an experience to get all of those all in at once. I mean, that's... It was. The turkeys and the deer, I mean, that's but a coyote like that to come and chase them off and then... If I could have got that on film, it would have been neat. Like them flying up, it was cool. Yeah. I, that's, that is something else. I, I mean, it's, that's just an experience that... I've seen coyotes in the woods, I believe, but never anything like that, to, yeah. you know, to come through. That, that was that's pretty wild. You know, from what I could tell of the shot, it was nearly straight up and down the way that it was. I'm, I, yeah. I've, I've always struggled with shots like that personally, but, you know, shooting it, I mean, even a big coyote, you know, it's a pretty small window, yeah. you know, trying to tuck it in behind the front shoulder there, but, oh well. But I, I, I'll be honest, I really am glad that you guys got to see some, some horns while you were here and, and some good ones at that, just because when 
I looked at the forecast when you guys were coming in. I was not encouraged. I was, it was like warm. 82, 83 <laughs> yeah. is the highs. Like low 60s for the lows, upper 50s. It's, I was so many acorns were falling in the woods. I was just worried that there was going to be no movement and it was going to be miserable hunting. And some of the walks were a little bit miserable. Uh, they were, I'm not going to lie, that was, I was sweating quite a bit. Yeah. But I did get to see some deer. Yeah. Uh, so I, that's. I think every hunt. Really? Every time we went out, other than that first morning, which we saw them with the flashlight walking in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. The first morning stand. where we didn't have the stand marked or nothing and just sat on that field line. I, I think we saw them every single time. That's, that's you know, and I, when, whenever this time of year you're hunting heavily massed oak flats, I guess it's, you stand yourself for a pretty good success, but this time of year, they don't call it the October lull for nothing. No. You know, and it's, it's tough on It is. It is. And I think that's where it pays to be a persistent type of hunter and willing to go out on days that you just feel like there's nothing going to be moving. Um, walk in while it's still a little bit hot and stuff like that to get, you know, be able to get set up and, and everything like that. So, I, like I said, I, I'm just I'm just glad you guys got to see some deer. Wish couple of them would have stepped a little bit closer or out in the open a little bit more but yeah well I told you this already like as far as um, the two spots that we were in mm -hmm. we saw shooter bucks so not sure which you'll consider the biggest compliment that or the fact that if I could I'd stay like I'm the biggest homebody but I'd stay if I could well like, I don't even want to leave yeah man, I, appreciate <laughs> I love it. that it's uh it's definitely good to get away for a little bit, for sure. I know yeah. I've, I've enjoyed my week off of work and getting to hang out and just getting the woods. It's, it's been a good week, for sure. Yeah. We may not have filled any tags, but this trip was everything I hoped it would be, and then some. Most years, I simply do my best to fit hunts around my work without ever taking significant time off just to hunt. Four days to get away from it all and focus on nothing but hunting was incredibly mentally freeing. I can't thank Will and Jazzy enough for this opportunity. Not only did they graciously provide us with a place to hunt and a place to stay, but they also put us in prime locations that resulted in some of the coolest encounters I've ever had in a tree stand. Thanks again to Will for the invitation. I cannot wait to get together again for another hunt later this year.